Welcome to Alaska Weather, a production of Alaska Public Media and the National Weather Service, Alaska Region. Produced and broadcast daily from the studios of KAKM, Alaska Weather provides complete forecasts, public, marine, and aviation for all of Alaska. Alaska Weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service. Hello, everyone, and thanks so much again for joining us here at KKM for Monday's edition of Alaska Weather. I'm Dave Percy, a meteorologist with the National Weather Service, and I'll be hosting this evening's show. Yesterday's satellite imagery showed uh, clouds here, along with some breaks over the southeast coast as a weakening low shifted north across Yakutat uh, earlier in the day on into Canada. Some clearing here, the North Gulf Coast seeing some sunshine as well as Prince William Sound and uh, partly to mostly sunny skies across South Central Alaska and a lot of clouds up over the interior all the way from the Alaska Range here right up to the Arctic Coast, but uh, some sunshine there over the Noatak Valley and out to the Northwest Coast. Also had this system here coming across the peninsula earlier in the day, bringing rain and then showers to that area, kind of shifting over toward Kodiak, but most of the moisture to the south. Showers extending up over the eastern Bering Sea. And then a lot of cloudiness right through here, uh, a lot of mid and high level clouds that uh, initially just slid on off to the southeast and dissipated, but quite an area of moisture gathering back out to the, over the western and southwest Bering Sea that's going to be heading northeast over the next couple of days. Otherwise, for today, you can see some clearing here from the uh, Kuskokwim Delta down into Bristol Bay and the Alaska Peninsula. Uh, some showers early over Kodiak Island, but uh, that began to uh, improve during the day. Showers also over southern Cook Inlet and uh, clouds here over the interior. Again, not much change, although a few breaks over the Copper River Basin. Partly mostly sunny skies, uh, northern Cook Inlet on into the Madnuska and Susitna Valley. Showers again here along the southeast coast today. One band kind of lifting northward and then some more showing up down to the south. And the main area back out here, that system that came across the Alaska Peninsula yesterday, already over to about this position here. And looks like that'll rotate a band of showers in over the southern panhandle for tonight. But today there's that uh, first band that may, came through earlier today it, over the northern panhandle from the central areas. There's still some showers down to the south. Low pressure in the Gulf of Alaska, some scattered showers along the North Gulf Coast, uh, mostly offshore though, but kind of a band extending across the Kenai Peninsula into southern Cook Inlet. Uh, scattered rain or snow showers, depending on your elevation, the time of day here uh, along the Alaska Range, especially the western Alaska Range, and then back to the west there across the southern Kusukwim Valley. And uh, some scattered shower conditions also up around Galena earlier today, then breaking out a little bit here over the northwest. Mostly sunny skies and chilly temperatures up across the Noatak Valley there. Kivalina, Point Hope, down uh, across Kotzebue Sound. Some sunshine, but uh, temperatures in the 30s there for the southern Seward Peninsula. Scattered showers here. This system bringing rain to the Alaska Peninsula. Uh, up to a half an inch having fallen at False Pass, while King Cove had 16 hundredths of an inch. Otherwise, uh, just a few hundredths of an inch here falling across the eastern Aleutians with some uh, scattered isolated showers there, extending back up toward the Pribilofs and just some widely scattered shower activity all the way up across, uh, well, to just west of St. Lawrence Island. High pressure out here over the southwest Bering Sea and Aleutians, keeping winds light out in that area and conditions dry. And then uh, tonight, uh, this warm front and the moisture heading to the northeast, initially into Russia, the high pressure ridge progressing <clears throat> a little bit farther to the east here, still off the coast, but uh, northerly winds uh, keeping up here, Kodiak Island, 15 to 25 miles an hour, some higher gusts out across the Alaska Peninsula. 
So look for some scattered showers along the Bering Sea side of the peninsula. Uh, fair skies to um, mostly clear possibly here along the southwest interior areas with some variable cloudiness up the west side but uh, mostly dry in this area. Still looking at some snow shower activity along the Alaska Range and the mountains north of Fairbanks. Otherwise some hit and miss clearing here up over the northeast interior. Should be fair with uh, variable clouds to mostly clear skies north Gulf Coast. Some clearing in the Copper River Basin, the Cook Inlet area. And uh, mostly Kodiak Island looks like those showers will stay off the coast there as they uh, slip on down to the southeast. Then this low will spin some moisture clouds and showers in over the southern pan. It'll kind of increasing this evening and tonight while the northern areas stay mostly dry. Some partial clearing and just an uh, isolated shower or two. North slope, uh, not much change from what you've seen there. Uh, areas of light snow over the north slope with some flurries and patchy fog along the eastern Arctic coast. High pressure in over the uh, Barrow area will keep winds light and variable in that area and back to the southwest under the ridge axis. And then it looks like uh, for tomorrow, kind of a first impulse moves in, brings a chance of some moisture there to the northwest coast with uh, wind swinging around to the south and southwest, picking up to about 20 knots tomorrow afternoon with the main front still back to the west. High pressure uh, edging its way eastward here, kind of weakening as it does, but riding along the southwest coast. The winds will be light and there could be some partly sunny skies tomorrow. Again, mostly clear there for Togiak over to Dillingham and along the Alaska Peninsula. Showers should end and it should be a dry day there with some clearing there on the southern areas, uh, Sandpoint and Chignik. Mostly sunny day tomorrow and breezy for Kodiak Island. Should be mostly sunny here over south central Alaska as well with uh, again, Along and on the north side of the Alaska Range, look for scattered rain and snow showers, and those will even slip on down into the Wrangell Mountains. Kind of a persistent upper level trough staying in this uh, general location, and that's back all the way up to the eastern Arctic coast. So, still some flurries and patchy fog there for the eastern Arctic coast, but the flurries a lot less. Uh, prevalent over the north slope and mostly off to the east. Again, for tomorrow, this low off the southwest coast of the Panhandle there keeps showers in over the southern areas with uh, just some scattered amounts up to the north and partial clearing. Should be a dry day along the north Gulf Coast. These showers staying well to the south there, so could be some partly sunny conditions again for Yakutat, Cordova, on into Prince William Sound. And then looking ahead to uh, for uh, Wednesday, we'll see this trough here actually develops into a low and moves to about this position. Still this low sitting off the coast there, so showers still in the forecast for the panhandle. But it looks like uh, for Tuesday or for Wednesday night and Thursday, this low will move due north and spread some rain and wind into the southern panhandle at that time. Otherwise, along the North Gulf Coast for tomorrow or for Wednesday, so lots of sunshine in store for the area there with a the high pressure in over the interior. General offshore downsloping winds uh, making for mostly clear skies and chilly temperatures, especially during the overnight hours, most, most areas falling into the 20s and uh, still breezy across Kodiak Island with small craft advisory still in the forecast there, but uh, general downward trend in the winds there. Light variable winds over the interior, some clearing, and then still an upper level trough over the eastern interior. That's going to keep a chance of some scattered snow shower activity there from the upper Yukon Valley down across the uh, upper Tanana Valley in 40 mile country. Eastern Alaska range, again, possibly as far south as the Wrangell Mountains, but amounts will be, uh, any accumulations will be well under an inch. So just some very light precipitation in that area. Back out to the west, that system driving east and northeast into the Chukchi Sea will be the strongest wind gradient. We've got gale warnings out from Cape Thompson to Cape Beaufort for Wednesday with small craft advisories to the north and south of that area. Wind won't be much of a factor here along that warm front, but look for some warm front type weather to push into the uh, west coast here all the way down to about Cape Newenham. Some of that could slip down toward the Alaska Peninsula in the form of uh, clouds, light rain, fog, drizzle, all the way up to the Seward Peninsula there. And also look for lower flying conditions. Look for partly an area of IFR extending from the Chukchi Sea all the way down into the southeast Bering with some drier conditions behind. A lot of clouds out over the uh, Bering Sea there and down to the Aleutians, but staying light on the winds here again for the central and eastern Aleutians. And again, the showers here over the southeast coast. And for temperatures down that way today, this afternoon, afternoon temperatures, mostly in the upper 40s to mid 50s, 56 at Annette, uh, the warmest location there. 
10 degrees cooler at Yakutat, uh, 50 with some sun in Cordova, 48 in Valdez. Lower 50s here for Cook Inlet in the Susitna Valley. Seward up to 53 today, 47 at Golcana. Nome, or Homer came in with 45, 47 there at Kodiak. And up uh, to the north there, north of the mountains, Northway had 46, but cooler back to the northwest there at Fairbanks with 40 degrees, 38 at Delta, 41 today in Eagle, and Fort Yukon had 34. Bettles, just a cool 36, but a chilly 19 this afternoon in Anatovic, 28 at Arctic Village. Along the Arctic coast, upper 20s to lower 30s pretty much uh, dominated the temperature pattern up in that area with uh, Newixit pushing up to 33 for a short time this afternoon. Mid-30s here with sunshine over the northwest interior. A lot of these temperatures coming up from the upper teens and 20s there from this morning. Upper 30s here along the southern, Kenai, or southern Seward Peninsula. 39 at Nome, same thing, 39 also at Unalakleet and Ammonic with 38 at St. Mary's. Otherwise, McGrath had 40 degrees, Sleep Mute 43 with 42 down at uh, Bethel. Sparavon just 32 degrees where they carried uh, snow much of the afternoon today, mixing with rain late. Otherwise, the Perbloff's out here in the mid-40s. Lower to mid-40s for the Alaska Peninsula, uh, 47 at Nelson Lagoon, same thing at King Cove, and about that at uh, Cold Bay. On Alaska, though, up to 52, Nikulski 49. Um, uh, cloudy skies in 55, actually, ADAC reached 56 today, which was the warmest location in the state. And lows for tonight out that way, upper 40s for the Aleutians, uh, upper thir or lower 30s here for the Bristol Bay area, and lower 40s for the peninsula. Teens through the Burks Range and mid-20s along the Arctic coast and north slope with uh, 20s here over the northwest interior. 20s also all the way down into the Yukon and Kuskokwim Delta and val lower valley areas there with uh, milder conditions out along the coast. McCoriak forecast low at 40. Upper 20s and 30s or mid 20s to lower 30s across south central Alaska and the 20s over the Copper River Basin, 20s through the Tanana Valley and 40s for the Panhandle. And for the highs tomorrow in the 50s here along the southeast coast once again and upper 40s to mid 50s with the warmest locations probably occurring at Cordova and Yakutat with mid 50s there. Lower 50s for Kodiak Island, otherwise lower 40s here over the southwest coast and kind of warming up a little bit there. Uh, for the Seward Peninsula and the uh, northwest areas in the Chukchi Sea, temperatures coming up as those winds swing around to the southwest and bring a little bit milder air in tomorrow with lower 40s and uh, lower 30s for the Arctic coast and in the 20s here, Anatovic and Arctic Village. Flying weather, a little bit of marginal VFR tomorrow here, tomorrow afternoon over the eastern Alaska range. Otherwise, with that uh, trough coming up, marginal VFR over the southern panhandle, VFR along the north Gulf Coast, all of uh, from Kodiak Island, much of the interior will be VFR right out here to the eastern Bering Sea in the Alaska Peninsula. Marginal VFR continuing here, mostly along the central and eastern Arctic coast and to a lesser extent now over the north slope. But uh, all this moisture out to the southwest, IFR spreading eastward across the Aleutians to about Atka. Marginal VFR should be back into the Pribilofs and down to about Nikulski by tomorrow afternoon, shifting up towards St. Lawrence Island. Then some marginal VFR here on the northwest coast. Passes, Anatovic, VFR tomorrow, as well as Adigan looking good. Lake Clark and Merrill wide open with VFR flying through those passes as well as rainy and windy looking VFR. Isabel, same forecast. In fact, all the passes will be VFR tomorrow, at least the ones I'm showing. And for Portage, VFR, Chilkoot and White, VFR. Freezing levels here, 2,000 feet, uh, plunging southward all the way to the Alaska Peninsula and then kind of hugging the coastline here, cutting through the northern panhandle and much of the interior tomorrow morning here at the surface all the way up to the Arctic coast and then much warmer air here with that southwest wind pushing milder conditions into the western uh, bearing and the Aleutians 10 to 12,000 feet. Icing threats uh, still out to the west, some of that slipping down toward the Pribilofs, mostly above 6,000 feet, but that'll all be making its way to the west coast on Wednesday. And then some uh, mixed icing here over the central and southern southeast coast above about 4,000 feet. Winds aloft, upper level low here, southwest of the uh, panhandle there. Again, the main jet cutting into the south, so cool showery conditions up to the north there. And now this uh, jet shifting in from today out over the Bering Sea, tomorrow will be right along the west coast there, 80 to 100 knots, and another branch out over the central Bering Sea, 
the whole pattern shifting eastward and then kind of flattening out, and that's going to allow southwesterly flow on Wednesday to bring that storminess into the Chukchi Sea. Three th or 9,000 foot winds up to 25 knots there over the panhandle. Northwesterlies 25 to 30 knots there along the southwest coast across Kodiak Island, the Alaska Peninsula. And then the southwesterly fetch out here at about 20 knots, strongest wind still out to the southwest, but up to 25 knots coming into the Chukchi Sea, lighter along the Arctic coast. 3,000 foot wind showing southwesterlies, 25 knots here blowing right up into the Chukchi Sea with actually some southwest flow aloft at, well, 3,000 feet, making it all the way to the central Arctic coast. Northerlies, though, here across the Alaska Range, 25 to 30 knots down across Kodiak Island, still pretty brisk out over the Bristol Bay area and Alaska Peninsula. And low pressure off the southwest coast, 25 knot winds there right along at the south and central coast, otherwise pretty light across the panhandle. Turbulence-wise, could be some light to isolated moderate chop, Port Alexander down across uh, western Prince of Wales Island, otherwise not too bad there for the remainder of the southeast coast, and some light to isolated moderate chop here along the Alaska Range through the Talkeetna Mountains, Kenai Peninsula with moderate chop from the western Alaska Range down across the Aleutian Range, Kodiak Island, and then increasing turbulence here up over the Chukchi Sea from the Bering Strait northward to about Cape Lisbourne. And after the break, hangar flying, I'll be back with the marine forecasts. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Harry Keeling, and on behalf of the Alaskan Aviation Safety Foundation and Alaska Public Media, welcome to Hangar Flying. Our guest this evening uh, was on the program last time, Dr. Mar uh, Marcel Dion. He's the reasonably new uh, regional flight surgeon for the FAA here in Alaska. Uh, a great flying uh, and a medical background. Started out as a country doc up in Maine. Uh, knows medicine, but knows flight medicine and a uh, uh, career in the Air Force. Uh, and uh, came up to Alaska and flew the airplanes up here with uh, out of Elmendorf. Knew he wanted to come back and now he's back as the regional uh, flight doc. Marcel, welcome back. Good evening, Harry. So we talked a little bit about the time you've been up here, but I'd like to kind of give you the opportunity to talk about maybe some concerns that you have, uh, aviation medicine com concerns specifically. The, uh, probably the, the one that's getting a lot of attention recently uh, with good uh, justification is um, pilot fatigue and sleep apnea, obstructive sleep apnea in particular. Uh, the Department of Transportation, as well as the FAA, ha are focused on addressing this issue. Um, and it's, it's a uh, condition that has received not much public attention until recent, um, but it's, it's a, also a condition that has some um, short-term as well as long-term uh, medical consequences. Uh, the, um, you know, people think of sleep apnea as, you know, if I'm not sleeping in the daytime, you know, it's not an issue. In actuality, it doesn't just affect sleep. It affects your decision time, multitasking, uh, your memory, uh, your ability to concentrate, all of which are, you know, key ingredients to good flying safety. Uh, but some of the long-term complications uh, are actually in many ways similar to untreated high blood pressure. And that's the, the, uh, the example that I use is, you know, you have a lifetime of somebody with high blood pressure that's untreated, uh, chances are, you know, they're going to develop early heart disease, uh, but potentially a stroke, kidney failure. Uh, same thing with obstructive sleep apnea. It puts an undue strain on the brain, heart, and lungs for lack of oxygen while you're sleeping. And over time, uh, the risks uh, are pretty much the same. Early heart disease, um, strokes, and uh, even diabetes. So um, this is an area uh, that came out of the uh, statistical reviews of various accidents in the Department of uh, Transportation, Transportation Industry. And uh, they've, you know, determined that either associated or direct causal was operator um, fatigue. 
of which a big component uh, sleep apnea was. So the FAA is, is mainly focused on identifying those pilots and getting them appropriately treated. Uh, and there are, there's a program in place where, you know, that can be done without having to decertify a medical pilot. You know, there's, there's a, a grace period of time where they can get it evaluated and turn in their uh, medical information for review. So generally speaking, is this uh, a question of someone self-identifying the problem? You know, it's many times it's not known to the individual. Um, just like chronic fatigue, we're, we're poor judges of our own fatigue status. Uh, so, you know, folks don't really understand or realize that they may be having, you know, symptoms, uh, even minor symptoms of disturbed sleep, um, moodiness, and, uh, you know, falling asleep or feeling drowsy when you're operating a vehicle or flying. Um. Hmm. So if, um, if a person is uh, diagnosed with sleep apnea, what, what happens then? What, what's the normal treatment? The, uh, the aviation medical examiner, the AME, uh, as long as they're otherwise medically qualified, is able to still issue the me medical certificate and the, uh, the pilot will receive information uh, on what is required to get it evaluated and uh, the, uh, the FAA will send the pilot you know, the same information uh, with clarification uh, in a lot of times. Uh, gives them 90 days to get evaluated and treated if they do have it. If they don't have it, uh, they just need, need to let the FAA know and you know, the issue goes away. If they do have it, uh, once we receive the information, uh, they're issued basically a flying waiver, special issuance. And on an annual basis, they just need to uh, uh, submit a clinical status update. Okay. Marcel, thanks very much for being on the program, and uh, welcome to Alaska. Thank you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed tonight's program. Until next week, fly safe. Welcome back. Well, today's sea ice analysis not showing much change with the main ice up here to the north. But as I mentioned yesterday, there is new ice forming here along the Arctic coast from Point Lay all the way over to Harrison Bay. And then this area of old ice still along the barrier islands. And since uh, Wednesday's the first day of fall, it's pretty good bet it'll have survived the summer. Moving on to the coastal marine forecast, small craft advisories are clearing straight southeast 25 knots tomorrow. Easterlies 20 to 25 knots there on the south coast, east northeast 15 to 20. Lynn Canal, Glacier Bay areas are mostly northern Lynn Canal, northerlies at 25 knots with northeasterlies there for Stevens Passage. And then on Wednesday, uh, looks like small craft advisories here for east to southeast winds along the central coast, uh, much lighter to the north and more subtly and lighter down along the extreme south coast. Southeast winds continue there for Clarence Strait and the northerlies 15 knots for Stevens Passage to about 20 knots for northern Lynn Canal. And 20 knot winds for Prince William Sound and Cook Inlet for tomorrow with small craft advisories here for Kodiak Island, the Barrens and Kamishak Bay. Northerly winds 20 knots for the North Gulf Coast with seas at about 4 feet. And then for Wednesday, still have some small craft advisories going in three areas. Kamishak Bay, the Barren Islands, east side of Kodiak Island, a little lighter there for Shelikoff Strait. Northerly's at about 15 here for the North Gulf Coast, up into Prince William Sound. And for the Alaska Peninsula tomorrow, we've got gale warnings out here for the water southwest of Kodiak Island. And then uh, 30 knot winds or 30 knot winds here across the Alaska Peninsula from the north northwest. The northwest 25 there for uh, Bristol Bay. And the outlook for Wednesday, those uh, turn westerly and lighten up to about 15 knots there. Uh, west to northwest now for the peninsula at 20 knots with four to six foot seas. Small craft advisories southwest of Kodiak. And for the eastern Aleutians, uh, mostly north to northwest, 15 to 25 knots tomorrow. For the central Aleutians, uh, pretty light and variable here for the uh, Adak and Atka area under high pressure. And then to the west of that high, southerlies 15 to 20 knots. And for Wednesday, 
still south to southwest, 15 to 20 knots there, with high pressure basically holding here just south of the central Aleutians. So the eastern areas here will have westerly winds, 15 to 20 knots. For the southwest coast, uh, south of Nunavak Island, small craft advisories with lighter winds to the north. Southwest 20 for St. Lawrence Island, small craft advisories there for uh, the northern Bering Sea, mostly to the west of St. Matthew Island. And then for Wednesday, uh, small craft advisories for the Pervolos, westerlies at about 25 knots, west-southwest uh, 25 to 30 knots for the northern Bering Sea, southerlies at 25 for St. Lawrence Island. Up along the Arctic coast, uh, easterlies at about 15 to 3 foot seas for the eastern stretch of the coastline. Then from the central coast all the way down to uh, Cape Thompson, southerlies 15 and southwest 20 knots there for the southeastern Chukchi Sea. And then for Wednesday, winds increase significantly. Again, we've got gale warnings out from Cape Thompson to Cape Beaufort and small craft advisories, 30 knot winds there from uh, uh, Wales all the way up to uh, Cape Thompson. And small craft advisories, a good increase on the southerly winds here for the western Arctic coast to about 20 knots on the central coast. Southerly's lighter on the east side. And for tonight, again, uh, scattered snow showers over the eastern interior and showers shifting up into the southeast coast. Otherwise, not too bad out here over the west. And for tomorrow, showery over the southern panhandle. Still some rain and snow showers here along the Alaska Range and southeast interior, possibly up to about Eagle. But uh, dry with some sunshine here, especially over south central Alaska down to Kodiak Island. North Gulf Coast looking good. And then on this system pushes up, brings the wind and rain into the northwest coast. Actually rain all along the west coast there. High pressure inland, sunshine down to the south. That ends today's edition. Thanks for joining us. These forecasts are to be used for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. Alaska weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service.